think this is really the beauty of this program. It's this opportunity to be useful and at the same time to learn and to get so much out of it. Before coming here I expected that uh, there could be some misunderstandings because of different ca customs and habits in behaving. I could understand why when I was doing like that the people would come to me, mostly kids. And it turned out that this is bi, which makes sense, but this one is not bi, but it means come here, which is say Django. And I'm still very fascinated by these like, small details that are actually part of your daily life. The Congo community is really a rural village in the northern part of Ghana. When we arrived by taxi, we passed it because it's so small. When I first met the Shea Butter women, they started dancing and singing. For the first month, I was never alone. Uh, everywhere I go, everywhere, uh, I always had someone like showing me the city, inviting me for dinner, for lunch. So I felt really, really welcome. I think there's a lesson that we can learn in Europe, <laughs> how to welcome people. I think our first feeling was uh, a little bit of uh, what am I doing here? <laughs> but this feeling actually went away pretty fast and it was really amazing to see how what was difficult at first became just a routine like okay there is no water and there is no electricity well you know we'll just <laughs> adapt and uh, eat uh, crackers for tonight. We managed to, to adapt to a lot of things. So I decided to apply for the UAV projects mostly because it's an amazing chance for developing in the humanitarian field. This is not the easiest uh, field to enter to. I wanted to connect myself again to practical field work with communities, which I've been doing before in Hungary. Over there I established and run two NGOs for nearly 20 years. I was very interested and fascinated by the possibility of put my skills, which are mostly about videography, photography and design, in practice in a totally new environment, in a challenging environment, and share those knowledge with the local cooperative or organization I'm working with. It was absolutely perfect for what I wanted to do because it was in Russia and it was about social work and it was with IDPs. It just makes everything that I wanted to do at that time. I was really interested in the aspect of social business. I believe it's a way forward in development because it breaks this dependency cycle. So you're providing skill set and uh, means for people to support themselves rather than just passing out a handout. <laughs> We say in Arabic one hand doesn't clap, so we need the two hands and uh, that means we need uh, always several uh, kind of people in the association. Not only staff of the association will be able to run the association and to help the society. We need also volunteers. Uh, EUS volunteers, it's expert uh, volunteers. We were lacking the real uh, professional people who would coordinate, who would organize documentation, structure, program. That's what we thought UAV could be a good idea. And we are very excited, actually. We needed people to come and support us fight our cause. And that was where it became necessary for us to have volunteers. They go into the education sector, they go into the health sector. So honestly, we have really benefited a lot from the volunteers. <laughs> At the beginning I was a bit scared that this job could have been like a routine job, but it happened that the job was really dynamic and I took part in all the different activities of the foundation. So I had the chance to take part with trainings with the police, but also office job. Principalmente mi trabajo es ser apoyo para el proyecto agroecológico. No me gusta ir a la comunidad, aunque implica madrugar, levantarse temprano, es interesante siempre ir allá, conocer, conversar y aprender cosas nuevas siempre. 
The biggest challenge that I encountered when I came to Nepal is actually reconciling of what we would like to do and what is possible. Or even if we would like to conduct the workshops, we need to understand that not everyone will attend those workshops. Those people need to cultivate their fields. They need to walk sometimes for hours to get water or to go to the nearest city to get supplies. The fact that they would not come to some of the workshops does not mean that they don't want to develop. It's sort of a difficult lesson to understand. <laughs> You have to be very, very flexible here to work in this organic flow. So it's, it's better to come without specific expectations. If you come with specific expectations, then you start looking for them and you start justifying them as soon as you find them. Usually humanitarian or development workers come within a country with their own apparatus, their own ideas, their own solutions. Here it's exactly the opposite. We come as one individual within a local organization. So we are here to serve the organization in order to serve the beneficiaries. And I think this makes a huge difference in the, in the spirit and in the values we are, we are carrying with us. I would really recommend this EU AV program to people who are looking for experience in the field. I think you need to be passionate. Very ready to, to accept that it might turn out something totally different from what you expected in the beginning. To everyone want to challenge themselves.